Not long ago, I got one of these uh, small portable oscilloscopes. This is a DSO-138, and I really wish I'd had one of these in high school when I started learning electronics. It's really amazing what it'll do for 25 bucks. Um, I, last time I did a walk around, I just kind of went through the functions of it, and well, that's interesting, but you know, we all want to really see it doing something real, right? And first of all, I want to clarify something I said last time. These two switches uh, display right here, and this one is a multiplier, and this one is the volts per unit. And so what happens is, if we start up our start up our frequency source, which happens to be a jewel thief. Um, yeah, we can see it oscillating up here about 30 some kilohertz. And if I switch the frequency, it changes the, uh, the volts per unit here that we're looking at. So we can do like one times one, uh, two times one gets it a little smaller or two times 0.1 or five times 0.1. So I usually leave it somewhere like out in here, at least at this frequency, and that works pretty well. Uh, what else? Well, let's see. Um, we are looking at about 1.3 volts, 1.2 volts on the VMAX. Uh, that's not unreasonable because the battery is a nickel metal hydride at about 1.2 volts and getting a little bit of flyback on it. And the frequency will vary a lot because uh, this is not a crystal controlled oscillator. It, it'll have many sub frequencies it'll like to oscillate at. The uh, power lines, you can see I'm just moving the battery line around and it, and it picks up a lot of different frequencies. It changes it. So everything is part of the circuit here. And it's also just picking up RFI noise from, from this circuit and anything else that happens to be in the room, the LED lights and the, and so on. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really nice. Uh, but we really can't tell much from uh, measuring this uh, jewel thief circuit. Uh, it would be a lot better if we compared this to say a real frequency generator source that was uh, relatively accurate. And I just happened to have one off camera right back there. And so why don't we hook this up to that and uh, see how accurate this thing really is. Here's our setup. We have the oscilloscope, which we've been using, and this is a frequency generator. Right now, the parameter is set at three volts sine wave and at uh, half a megahertz, 500,000 kilohertz. I will set this so we can change the uh, kilohertz. There we go. And if we look over here, we see this is stable at around 500 kilohertz, however, the wave is much too small to actually see what's going on. This is the maximum I have found that'll handle. Uh, I've also found that uh, around 400K, it behaves a lot better, below 400K, I should say. And let's do that. Let's go on down there. So that's 400K. Um, it doesn't really stay stable here, which is disconcerting, but the wave is usable. And if we keep going down, we get down to 300K. That's a lot more visible. Uh, the detail in the wave is a lot more visible. And down to 200K, much better. Um, there's 100K, 80, 70, 60, 50. So this is where the, the, uh, the, uh, Jewel Thief, that's the range it was operating in somewhere in here, in this range between 100 and in the uh, high 20s. And you can see the wave is extremely usable at this point. Um, yeah, and if we want to keep going down, I got to move over. Otherwise, I will run out of room. And there we are, seven, um, four. And it's probably time to reset our time base so we can do that and get something 
but we're seeing a couple waves on there at least and keep going down down to let's get down to there we go so now we're on the low end and we're seeing it's about three volts which we saw things putting out so that's more accurate and we're popping around about what is that six um, about six kilohertz is what it's saying and that's uh, not bad it says 6.1 over here let's keep going down there's 5.2 yeah let's see how low this will go four threes High threes, no problem. Um, high twos. Let's check our detail again. Uh, we're showing closer to three volts and frequencies right at two kilohertz, which is good. Let's reset our time a little bit. There we go keep scrolling down one kilohertz and yes it's uh, got that nailed so clearly at the low end it does much better for accuracy it's still usable upwards of 300k i would say and let's set our, reset our time base again Five, four, three, two. Now let's move over. Our time base. And let's get it to some even number. Let's see how she's doing. Whoops. Okay, there we are at a hundred hertz and relatively stable three volts yeah 50 percent duty cycle so yeah it's doing really well on the low end um crank it down here let's see what she'll do seven six five four three two one whoa and where am i at I'm at a one second so this is a one second time base it is showing one volt which is no not terribly accurate one hertz yeah so kind of across the board between say one hertz and even lower I suspect uh, up to around 400 yeah it'll do 500 but again the wave's not very usable uh, kilohertz it's it's doing okay so yeah I, I cannot say enough good things for 25 bucks i mean again this is this would have uh, really been wonderful for me when i was uh, learning electronics early on and just couldn't afford real scope okay well that's it i uh, hope you found this useful and interesting in your diy electronics works